before Graphically novel But the same old trouble Villains always knocking at the door Pretty pictures on the page But nothing ever stays the Thank you, Vandello, and welcome once again to Graphically Novel. My name is Josh Wasta, a.k.a. Fallout Fury, and with me is my theories that are dashed, my Agatha all along, and he killed Sparky too. It's fair. <laughs> uh, at least we're done with the weird compliments. That was getting creepy. Well, we're in season five now. That was a season four thing. <laughs> and with us, as always, the lovely and talented, the Baroness of Ms. Jennifer Howland. Our Scarlet Witch. Yes. <laughs> Thank you, Bear. And we have a returning guest with us today. We have Ms. Leia Cameron. Thank you for joining us, Leia. Hey, everybody. What's up? <laughs> The wonderful co-host, by the way, of our new second show, Rec Conversations. Lay and I break down really confusing storylines. And actually, we will be doing House of M for the next Rec Conversations episode. Sweet. Yeah, it's going to be a busy weekend. Busy weekend. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, now you just get a glimpse into how all of my weekends are <laughs> moving forward. Graphically novel recording on Saturday, the right conversations on Sunday, bunches of reading in between. Yeah, yeah, there is a lot of a lot of homework I got to do for this. <laughs> So speaking of uh, House of M, we're doing WandaVision today, which we just finished yesterday. The finale dropped yesterday when we were recording this. So we're all still deep in our, what the fuck was that? <laughs> uh, and obviously before the finale, we I, I chose the book and I chose House of M because so many of us that knew House of M and were watching WandaVision had this whole thing on there that this was going to be another House of M. And then it wasn't. And then it wasn't. <laughs> not at all. Well, kind of, but still no. Yeah, kind of, <laughs> but not really. Uh, but uh, so let's let's talk about the show. Let's start with the show. Bear, you're our you're our media show guy. Compared to other things in the MCU, where does WandaVision fall for you? You know, I was it, this was kind of mind blowing because you just you stack it up against everything else in the MCU. Um, you you don't have this kind of lead in this kind of build up and this kind of okay, like where's it going? Like I, I've watched all the other movies and never have I been like okay which way are they going to this are they going this way are they going that who's who's the bad who's the real bad guy here like is it is it all really wanda is it you know what are the people in town is it you know the military you know the sword guys outside it's like eh, what wait 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 no what uh no and then every episode you're just like oh what uh 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 squirrel no <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, and then you spend a whole week in between episodes wildly theorizing. I had an entire oh god, no, I couldn't spend a whole week. I was, <laughs> I was literally like, uh, okay, I just watched the three episodes that are out. Now I'm gonna sit and I'm just gonna ignore it for like three more weeks, and then I'm gonna binge three more episodes. <laughs> There was no Meanwhile, way I could on watch Facebook, this I'm over there like uh like the conspiracy guy dot gif just like wildly <laughs> postulating, uh right? and stopping stopping strangers in the street, asking them what they thought, like <laughs> <laughs> Are you Mephisto? <laughs> Red yarn. That's right. <laughs> Yes, absolutely. Uh, Leia, uh, what did you think on a on an MCU? Wow, um... <laughs> there was no there was no Black Widow in it, so there was no I, Black Widow in it. Uh, obvious, that, obvious cinema sin. I hear that one day they'll be making a movie with her in it, but I will believe that when I see it. Get out. <laughs> <laughs> It's it's been in development hell for some time, so I don't know if we're ever gonna. I don't know if it's ever gonna make it out. Listen, um, not, new not mutants that I'm came out. <laughs> new mutants came out, so that's true. And surprisingly, it wasn't bad. Yeah, no, I, I enjoyed we, it. We went over that yeah. with Leia <laughs> yeah. in an episode. We sure did. <laughs> God, this feels like deja vu. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, Wait a minute, yeah, I'm having a vision. Um, I uh, sorry, bad pun. I really, um, I was really excited about this particular project. Um, and um, for for people who don't know me personally, I am uh, just a giant mcu uh nerd and uh i i always try to keep up to speed with what's going on and whatnot so wandavision was, i think was supposed to come out third in the uh, in the lineup it was supposed to come out um after 
uh, after Falcon and Winter Soldier, after Black Widow, and after um, Loki, I believe. Um, that sounds right, because I think and, all of those are kind of building into Doctor Strange too. Right, right. Um, I think if I remember correctly, I want to say that WandaVision was either third or fourth because it was supposed to lead directly into Doctor Strange. Like the release date, the original release date of WandaVision and Doctor Strange were supposed to be like right one after the other, kind of like what they're sort of trying to do with Falcon and Winter Soldier and and suppose some other Marvel movie that's supposed to be coming after that. I don't remember. Uh, Black Widow, maybe. Um, I don't know. Again, it's a rumor. Um, <laughs> 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 that that completely shot and done and not released rumor. <laughs> I'll never stop being bitter about this movie being pushed back like a year and a half. Um, <laughs> the vid, but, man. But yeah, so I was surprised they were doing this one first. And um, I'm glad they did. I think that this is kind of the uh, the series that the, 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 the world needed right now, um, for better or for worse. Um, it had a, a very serious impact on the future of the MCU. It had a very serious impact, I think, on a lot of things that people are experiencing right now um, in the uh, global pandemic, um, you know, dealing with themes of grief and loss and, and whatnot. And I think that it was kind of a, a message that everybody needed to to kind of take to heart. So, I mean, I, that being said, it's it, I absolutely loved it. I was, I was hooked from the first episode and ugly cried at the end. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, Jen, you, you had an interesting perspective on this. I'm going to ask you the same question, but I'm also going to ask you, would you have preferred that we knew nothing about this, that we ignored it and that we binged it? Cause you don't like waiting a week. I, I don't, um, you know, I, I grew up having to watch TV as it was given to us and <laughs> by um, the television gods, by the television gods. But once I was able to, um, you know, on demand, watch it whenever I wanted to. That was amazing. And then when, you know, like places like Netflix just started releasing entire series, you know, instead of like, here's your first episode. Yeah. Have fun with this. It's only one. Right. You know. Yeah. It's it's one rental and you can get all of the discs for, you know, season one of Buffy. And like, wait, wait, what? Yeah. Uh, Excuse me? So... I usually like to just watch stuff as it, you know, as as much as I want to. And I'm definitely not a super binge watcher usually. Oh, no, I totally am. <laughs> I mean, I'll watch a, f- a couple of episodes. But when I want to watch an episode, I want to watch an episode. Right. Like we're doing Snowpiercer right. season one right now. And we did five episodes in like three days. Yeah. I mean, we we were like, but we want to, like, we want that option to go on to the next mm-hmm. one. Yeah, I, I, I totally get where you're coming from. The thing that uh, WandaVision, I loved it, but the, the thing that really impressed me about it, Leia, to go kind of with what you were saying, I think this was brilliant to release first because I think this sets the expectations for the yeah. casual viewer. Yeah, because absolutely. they're used to an MCU movie that's just going to take them from point A to point B, and sometimes Bruce and Nat will kiss, and that's whatever. <laughs> Uh, you know, <laughs> but, but it, you know, they, they kind of throw things in there without an explanation. WandaVision was awesome to not give you an explanation, but that was part of its charm and it's, you know, bringing you through. This is not going to the theater and seeing a Spider-Man movie because oh, God, a Spider-Man no. movie has a beginning and an end and usually has like a teaser or something to get you wanting to watch the next one. That is a question, but WandaVision, like there are so many things at the end of this that are still unexplained, mm-hmm. but that's that's the idea. Right. right. It, it is long form storytelling um, that are going to, I I personally think that these shows, especially on Disney Plus, are going to be as influential to the overall story or more than yeah. the movies will. Um, yeah. When you start talking about, like, especially once the, the Infinity Gauntlet series was over, they, they people have been saying, well, they got huge shoes to fill. How do you go mm-hmm. anywhere from that? Well, the answer is the TV shows. Yeah. Well, absolutely. No, I agree. Because, you know, it, especially in WandaVision, you're able to go much more in depth than you can in a movie. You're able to really um, do a character study over a period of time rather than having to, you know, be like, okay, Wanda is grieving. And in a movie, you couldn't take the time to to see the minute influences that grief had on her like you could in the TV series. Sure, absolutely. And like one of the things that I absolutely love too is that of these, of all these series, um, they're doing something really clever which is they are giving established characters um that that have been kind of like second string or background characters for the most part um that they're giving them actual focus and character development um that they have lacked i mean you know again look at for example 
Hawkeye. Hawkeye shows up in the first Thor movie, or I'm sorry, the uh, yeah, the first yeah. the first Thor movie, yeah. and he's there. And and if you know who he is, you know. But if you if you're a if you're not a comics reader, it's just a guy who has a bow and arrow for some reason, and this is yeah. never explained, you know. And yeah. and so you know, and then then you, you kind of you see the first Avengers movie, he shows up again, but again, he's not really Hawkeye for like ninety percent of the movie. He's being mind controlled, and he's not himself, you right. know. So so you know, and he shows up obviously in, su- in subsequent films, but we don't really know anything about Hawkeye. Um, you know, we we know who he is kind of, but but we don't know where he came from or why he was, you know, recruited to S.H.I.E.L.D. or anything like that. And, you know, so it kind of gives him a little bit of an origin story, um, you know, and and it also gives people like uh, like Sam Wilson and and my beloved James Buchanan, Bucky Barnes, um, a few a few moments to, to really shine as characters without being the sidekick or or the support member of the team. You know, and I think that's been off cool. series with Jimmy Woo. Jimmy Woo. Yeah, Jimmy Woo. <laughs> oh my Jimmy God, Woo I... and Kat Dennings, right? Doing oh X Files in the MC. Oh my God. Absolutely. <laughs> sign me up sign me yeah, up right? <laughs> i mean but yeah yeah the 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 thing that i've also noticed is everyone's big concern with uh end game happening and and all of that is is that you've taken not just your major characters and players off the board but they were tied to the big names mm-hmm. so you got your chris evans that is done with captain america quote unquote but mm-hmm. you know all of these are quote unquote but you know Robert Downey Jr. is done as Iron Man. Um, Scarlett Johansson is done as as Nat, you know, as Nat. And so those are your banner names, you know. Right. I the mean, banner's not done. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Uh, but that's that's the thing is you so you have Paul Bettany and Elizabeth Olsen great actors love them mm-hmm. as actors mm-hmm. but they haven't again been what what were the chances that somebody looked at it and this is not Disney is obviously not treating this as a normal movie thing because what are the chances you're going to take those secondary characters and those secondary level actors and put you know you add Catherine Hahn, Kat Dennings, Randall Park mm-hmm. you know and, and you're like yeah. okay. These are all not by any means a list Hollywood actors. They far surpassed. I mean, I don't know about that because Paul Bettany has been just an up and comer ever since 2001 when he did a Night's Tale. And most people look at a Night's Tale like, oh, it wasn't a very good movie. But his role right. in Night's Tale was, is what got him everything else since. It's what got him into Master and Commander. It's what got him into, you know, just tons of other roles because he did an amazing job. No, he's yeah. an amazing actor, but he's not, he's not who I think of when I. I think of like you know your Chris Evans is your Robert Downey Jr. is your uh, you know, Scarlett Johansson, Scarlett you Johansson know. or or all of the the New Zealand family. <laughs> but, but also think about how you know the the background characters like Clark Gregg, mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. think of all of the amazing talent that they've used for these like smaller mm-hmm. roles, and and they find a way to make those characters shine. Absolutely, and, that's one of I, the things I love about the MCU is that no talent is ever wasted their casting directors are whatever they're paying them it's not enough like <laughs> i i'm not I'm, I'm not entirely unconvinced that marvel doesn't grow some of these people in a special lab for these roles <laughs> i'm gonna i i would say that especially about tayona paris who uh was stature um <laughs> I can only remember her superhero name off the top of my head. Spectrum. <laughs> Spectrum. Spectrum, sorry. Spectrum uh, is Cassie Lang. <laughs> you're right. <laughs> you mean Monica? Monica, yes. Monica Rambo. Monica Rambo. Uh, you know, we knew through rumors and everything else that, she, you know, she was going to play the little, basically the little girl from Captain Marvel. That's all we knew her as. Mm-hmm. But what they did with that story and the questions that you have, because they never resolve, like, why when Captain Marvel is brought up, is she so pissed? Like, yeah. All of a sudden, yeah. she's just like, we're not talking about her. Yeah. And I'm like, oh. Change and, the subject. But by the end of the movie, and it's unsure, either Carol or Fury has sent someone to recruit her. Because right. all it said was, it's a friend of your mother's. And according to Captain Marvel, a, you know, it was a scroll that showed up. So that honestly could be Carol or could be Fury. It could uh, be Fury. I'm going to go said, ahead. They said he is waiting for you. They did. Okay. They okay. Did. Well, then, yes. I was, was just about to say. They, I'm going to go ahead and say that. Uh, so Nick Fury's getting his own series as well. Um, so he's getting the ah, Secret War series. Sweet. Oh man. Okay. So we will. That is that is setting up uh, both Captain Marvel two and I believe Secret Wars because I, if I remember correctly, in the timeline, um, Secret wait. Wars comes out after Captain Marvel two. Uh, I mean, wait, again, Secret everything. Secret Wars pending. or Secret Invasion? Or I'm sorry, it's Secret Invasion. Okay. Um, because Secret Wars we have to read later for rec conversations, and that's. <laughs> battle world 
I was just <laughs> thinking way too. I was thinking way too far ahead. Yes, I believe it's an invasion. Um, but at any rate, I mean, like you know, so he's getting his own thing too, which will be super exciting. Um, I I said the other day it could just be like you know, 30 minutes of Samuel L. Jackson slowly eating an apple while looking or staring directly into the camera for half an hour. And I would just be like applauding, like, bravo, bravo. <laughs> um. Now, every once in a while, everyone, when he gets done, he puts the, the core down. He just goes, motherfucker. And that's yeah, and then roll credits, that's <laughs> written by Samuel L. Jackson, directed by Samuel L. Jackson. <laughs> Screenplay by Samuel L. Jackson. <laughs> Best boy, Samuel L. Jackson. <laughs> Samuel L. Jackson. <laughs> um, but yeah, to- uh, okay. So talking about those second level characters that are introduced, let's now talk about the C-level background actors that weren't even things that came back for this show yeah uh yeah how cool randall is park and cat dennings right like that was super cool and like i just so i love cat dennings just in general and and i loved her in the thor films um and i was so excited to see her come back because she's just so she's just so talented and she's got such a great sense of humor like um she she just really uh she just really shines and whenever she's in a role but but absolutely as as darcy and so i was happy to see her come back um randall park as well like um what a great what a great character in general but but also I was just incredibly charmed by the fact that this man spent uh, a couple of years just harassing the piss out of Scott Lang. And in the meantime, he found some some time to go to the online uh, close-up magic university and learn some tricks of his own because he was like jealous. Like, right. that's, like, that's great. That is that is amazing. I love it. It's such a great little, you know, if you know, again, it's one of those Marvel things. Like if you know, you know, like if you're picking up on the, on the background stuff, but even if you don't, it's still funny. Like it's still cool. Yeah, it's, well, it's uh, in the beginning of the MCU, all of the Easter eggs and all the nods were basically to primarily the comics and they still do that but I noticed they don't do it as much because the MCU is so well established you've got 30 some movies and, and how many different shows at this point that your subtle nods are things that more people get because they've watched the whole MCU so they're just things back to previous movies Right, right, exactly. Um, yeah. Agents of Shield used to do this all the time. Um, yeah, we you have know, tons of callbacks. Right, even though technically it's out of continuity now because they moved all of Agents of Shield with the last season out of what's happening in the MCU. I'm still kind of bitter about it, mm-hmm. but <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah. So, uh, Bear and Jen, what did you think about like bringing these characters that were set pieces, if anything, like before back in and giving them a much more prominent role? Well, I think it just makes it for a much a richer universe in general and like you were just saying exactly the point of <clears throat> now we've got the level of you know we're calling back to our own material which is much more accessible for everybody else than necessarily just going back to the original comics yeah i, I agree <clears throat> i think that you know like i said before marvel does an excellent job of making sure that you don't just see a mass of people that just are doing jobs like they pick people doing these background jobs out because they're they're people you know i think it really does a great job of saying yeah there are 50 people here working on computers and now you know the story of this one and right. and it makes it more interesting because now you're that, that makes you pay more attention to what's going on in the background during mm-hmm. scenes in movies and TV shows. So uh, not just those characters, but then obviously you have uh, characters that are introduced in this series. The, the, the great and powerful Catherine Hahn, um, who, I mean, I've been aware of her, but I think I really kind of fell in love with her with uh, Bad Moms. Bad Moms, mm-hmm. the, the first and second one, she's just so good in it surrounded by other very talented um actors that she just she held her own you know oh, being see, a, i remember her from parks and rec that's where i yeah right. uh, that's 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 where i mostly remember her from and she was great in that like i loved i loved her role in that. it was so good <laughs> Um, and then bring in, bring in my, my, my Emma Caulfield back to me, my, my Anya from, uh, from Buffy so that I can see her again. Um, I was really, really happy about it. And I'm really happy that it just seemed like she was going to be a one episode and done, but she has a few really important lines in the finale that I loved. Um, but yeah, just obviously Agatha is going to be a thing in the MCU now. She's out there. Yeah. You know, you have a new villain. And since the MCU, for some reason, keeps killing off their villains, uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, 
we get that, uh, you know, somebody else is out there, you know, and especially when she says something like, you don't know what you've done. You will need me soon. And I'm like, right. well, she'll be in Doctor Strange too. Like, yeah. <laughs> I mean, at, if, at it minimum. if it wasn't enough foreshadowing to say, you know, you're you're a myth. You're you're the Scarlet Witch. You're you're strong. You're supposed to be stronger than the Sorcerer Supreme. And it's just like, okay, well, you know, cue you know Benedict Cumberbatch. Yeah, right. back in. <laughs> So other thoughts on WandaVision? Did anybody have anything? I actually kind of just nerded out for Luke um, when they started talking about the ship of Theseus. Oh my God, oh that my was God, yeah. such great a great scene. scene. This is so brilliant. So, okay, I'm going to I'm gonna uh, throw in something too. So obviously, you know, I've read House of M and, and I read House of M both in prep for this and then the, the one uh, that Josh and I are doing on Red Conversations. But I think another key important part for this um, was Tom King's run on Vision. Mm, and I don't know I if any read. people on that uh, read that, but it is. It, I feel that that series informed this one a lot more than House of M did. Um, mm. It's really, it's really outstanding, and that's the kind of dialogue that 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 could have been ripped directly out of that run with the kind of dialogue that Tom King writes. Like it, it was, it was so good. Yeah, I do love any scene where it seems like it's going to be a big climactic fight. And it turns into a philosophical discussion. Now, <laughs> there was there was one problem that I had because I just watched that episode this morning right before I went and got breakfast. And so I'm sitting there and I'm eating breakfast and I'm like, and it's kind of just soaking into my brain. <laughs> and the one minor issue that I figured that I had with it by the end is, so you have Red Vision, who is basically just a construct of Wanda's mind and her experiences with him. Um, and now he is in a philosophical debate with his actual corpse. Right. White vision, yeah. Um, but since since Red Vision is the, the construct of Wanda's memories, how does Wanda have, you know, growing up as a poor child in Sokovia, have knowledge of classical philosophy to then debate White Vision? You see what I'm saying? Uh, yeah, and I'm going to I'm gonna give you the well, response that Marvel would give. Can which I, is, can I, oh yeah, can I please? Because he was created from the Mind Stone, and the Mind right. Stone is from Wanda. That's true, okay. All right, that 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 works. That ties Woo! it up in my brain. I nerded. There, there I was nerded. Just, you nerded. That, that one thread that was still just like how, how does how does a how does a poor white girl from Sokovia have any knowledge of classical philosophy that could be transferred into this you know construct of vision to then have a conversation philosophical conversation with himself about and yeah that works. Yeah. That, that, <laughs> my my Marvel explanation that is going time. to be hand wave magic. Uh, <laughs> anytime better. anytime you see something like that, a wizard did it. <laughs> I'm also a Simpsons fan. Uh <laughs> <laughs> But but yeah no like that that's uh that was that was that was very cool Jen I appreciate your answer that because I actually that makes a lot of sense I'm gonna go with I'm gonna go with Jen's answer Yep I am yeah. too I'm gonna abandon my answer for Jen's I, I, will, I paid uh, attention while watching the series <laughs> I will consider that thread tied and uh, put it tuck it away in the back of my head tuck it under my collar and move on Your no prize will be arriving in the mail <laughs> uh, That's that's for the people that are huge Marvel geeks. <laughs> Uh, it used to be that Marvel, if you would write them and point out either an inconsistency or a, or a like whatever or answer a question or something like that, they would send you what was called a no prize, which is literally just a certificate saying you get no prize. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, the paradox. <laughs> uh, but it was signed by Stan Lee normally, so you know those go for <clears throat> a lot now. Um, so we read House of M for this because three quarters of this show looked like it was building up to a House of M style uh, introduction of the mutants, especially when Quicksilver showed up. Everybody lost mm -hmm. the goddamn minds. Yeah. And yeah. no. Uh, well, and to be fair, I don't think that this necessarily negates any of that. I right. think it sets it up because they explicitly say that Wanda was essentially born with her powers and they were just enhanced with the Mind Stone. Right. So that sets, the, that sets the stage for mutants. We're not there yet and I didn't expect a full introduction introduction to the to the x-men with this show but like it's definitely i mean they, they put it out there and they're like okay just so you know right you're real 
Right. Well, I was happy because, uh, oh, what's the doctor's Evan name? Peters. Evan Peters is my favorite Quicksilver. Oh, God, he's so great. <laughs> he's so good. And this also, yeah, I, it, I don't know how I forgot to add him to the list of, of characters brought in because he's his own category. He is yeah. he <laughs> is literally the Fox merger come to life. <laughs> yes. Um, yes. You know, uh, and this also gave him the chance because Quicksilver in the, in like first class and, and that continuity of the x-men um was always fun he wasn't this fun like he (laughs) had a lot of fun with this and you could tell oh yeah Uh, he was just having a blast uh, the the conversation about people's accents oh my god going as they please was yeah was particularly what happened to your accent what happened to yours yeah (laughs) (laughs) yeah I mean, also, you know, in, in and they never got that far that I remember in the X-Men First Class, but Jen, when you were reading House of M, and this is not really a spoiler, one of the first things you said was, wait, Wanda's Magneto's daughter? <laughs> <laughs> I was still kind of hoping that in the in the final episode, uh, if I had written it, I I would have absolutely gotten uh, Magneto to show up and be like, "Daughter, it is time to come home," or whatever, um, and just end it. Roll credits. Just have everybody just lose their absolute minds. Um, but, <laughs> you had you a would have really heard the collective scream across the country. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you did have a really subtle nod uh, when she comes out of the bubble and turns all of the guns on the general yes. that yeah. was very magneto yeah. right I, um, I saw that and i was just cheering i was like yeah she gets it from her daddy <laughs> <laughs> but when it comes to to wandavision and recommending comics i guess um the vision run that i have not read that uh, leia you mentioned earlier would yes be one. by tom king please read it everyone should read it it's so good <laughs> house of m is another one that that i would recommend because it does get really into wanda and her powers and, and yeah uh what what happens when you know in this it was the mind stone but in house of m it's having access to charles xavier in her head mm. uh <laughs> to amplify her powers and i just want to say fuck emma frost <laughs> I, love I, I blame her. You, yes. And I'm, I'm going to skip ahead and say, I'm going to fucking absolutely read more because I want to see how Emma Stone, or Emma Stone, Emma Frost did all of this. <laughs> you leave yes. Emma Stone out of this. She did nothing wrong. <laughs> <laughs> she is a dear, sweet woman. <laughs> yes. Jen's theory in House of M uh, is that actually Emma Frost was behind all of it. Because she wanted yeah. everyone to kill Wanda and everyone's like, no, we can't do that. So she's like, fine. <laughs> <laughs> um, but the third book uh, is actually a pre that leads up to House of M, and it's called Avengers Disassembled. And it is um, what they refer to in House of M. It's the actual storyline where Wanda goes crazy and inadvertently through her powers kills three Avengers. Uh, I totally it- forgot that Hawkeye had died um, until I was rereading it. And I was like, oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> And Clint's not happy about being no. A, dead, or B, resurrected. Like, <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, yeah. there is a running theme of Clint's just not happy. Yeah, he's just not having a good time, which, I mean... Yeah. More so in the comics, too. Yeah, yeah. Right, right. Like, Jeremy Renner has, uh, you know, despite the... <laughs> sorry. Despite the issues that, you know, have, have arisen... Uh, supposedly with him. Uh, Jeremy Renner plays, can play a very broody, like, I'm angry Hawkeye, which we definitely see in, like, Endgame. Mm -hmm. Um, But most of the time, he's kind of a fun dude. Like, he's Hawkeye. He, you know, like... He's he's the guy that's going to make the quip. He's almost the Spider-Man of the Avengers. Because yeah, yeah. His quips aren't like Tony's, which are biting and hurtful. Uh, <laughs> They're mainly just self-deprecating and kind of sad. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. And then, you know, he loses his family uh, in Endgame and becomes Ronin, which is a great, you know, uh, MCU nod. But he's just, he is so much angrier in so much of Marvel, um, except for like Fractions Run. Fractions right. Run run which i hope they do more of that in in hawkeye that would be awesome um i just really want to know what happened in Budapest. Um, well if if we ever get a black widow movie which it's rumored that we might um <laughs> <laughs> it's supposed to cover that actually Right. Um, they that were, was, they were, they were spotted, uh, they were spotted filming in Budapest. Um, <laughs> and it could have just been a smoke screen and they could have just had some cameras out because they don't plan on ever releasing a Black Widow movie. Who knows? It's a mystery. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Bump. Uh, yeah. it's like Bear's set and <laughs> Leia's spike. spike. Yes, that's what that was there. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Hmm, I just want to know about Budapest. Well, Leia. <laughs> 
<laughs> so uh, to give a little background, House of M came out in 2005 to 2006. Um, it was the summer blockbuster thing uh, that Bendis, uh, Brian Michael Bendis, started doing when he really started at the helm at Marvel. He brought back the idea of the, the many issue crossover. Uh, House of M was one of the first ones. And in fact, it was the year before Civil War. Uh, to give you a time frame, like House of M stuff slides directly into Civil War. Um, but it was, we read eight issues because that was the main House of M. Mm. This is House of M. There were actually 65 total issues. Um, that doesn't surprise me considering where House of M leaves off. Well, right. but most of them were also kind of prequels in House of M that were the rewritten uh, stories of how people got yeah. to where they were in House of M. So to name just a few, there was um, Avengers, which is basically all the Avengers that you don't see. Um these are all mostly people that you don't see and or or see very little of and their backgrounds leading up to house of m um there was one called civil war which was funny because it was before civil war but it was how magneto fo formed the house of m um there was fantastic four iron man uh there was incredible hulk that explains where hulk was during all of this mm, nice. uh mutopia which is kind of like a street level cop drama um because they mention it a little bit when um sam wilson shows up and is talking to Luke Cage and he's the cop and they're like, how's it feel being the, the pet like human cop in the mutant sapien. department. Yes, the sapien. <laughs> the token sapien. That's, that's that street level kind of thing. Um, there's new X-Men, which are kind of like the younger X-Men and where they were. Uh, Spider-Man, which explains like when they, they never go into it in the main story and I always wondered why. But Peter Parker is actually like hugely popular. <laughs> yeah. And <laughs> Yeah, like is... people walking down the street like, oh my God. Yes. And they're like, hey bro, it's Spider-Man. What's up, man? Woo! <laughs> but in House of M, people assume assume he's a mutant so he's popular because he's a mutant mm. and then basically his story is people find out he's not and blackmail him um so he's going through all of that while there's also house of m going on which they never really touch on in the main story but it's a cool kind of background um uncanny x-men uh war zones which was um basically how all the different countries interacted. So you have like Latveria and you have uh, Atlantis and, and all of that. Uh, World of M featuring Wolverine, which goes way more into the background that Wolverine and his team had. Uh, and then Masters of Evil, which is who... What are all the villains yeah. up to? I was so excited. I'm like, <laughs> we got we got all these people. We got Magneto and Doom, and the, yeah. like the list just keeps going of all these people that are going to be at this party. And I'm just like, oh, there's going to be an epic fight. And then like you don't <laughs> really you don't get to see that fight. You get right. to see a fight, but you don't get to see that fight. And I'm like, it's not even a good fight. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, but the part of House of M that I think really relates to where everything is going is the end, um, which I'm not going to get into so much because of spoilers. But once you read it, you'll kind of understand this conversation. Um, but it is the interaction between... Uh, Doctor Strange and Wanda at the end. Yeah. Um, and it is it is actually a post cursor um, to a conversation that they have in Avengers Disassembled because in that Stephen Strange is like, chaos magic is a rumor. There's no such thing as chaos magic. And mm -hmm. then Avengers Disassembled happens and he's like, I was fucking wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Because that that really gets into, their relationship really gets into the fact that Stephen Strange had to study under the Ancient One and bust his balls to find out all these things about magic and Wanda just gets it, yep. you know, uh, inherits it. Mm. And that's a huge issue, especially for magicians, because you, you know, th this is a theme that goes through a lot of different things. Like, if you don't have your natural controls that come from learning, you know, it, it, well, in some ways... It's flat out shown in WandaVision. Right. Hashtag well, like Agatha was kind of right. Yeah. But <laughs> the the using Doctor Strange as a comparison is really good because before he became Doctor Strange, he was a surgeon. Mm -hmm. And surgeons train and and a lot of what they do is muscle memory. Like they do something over and over again so it becomes, you know, and that's how he became Doctor Strange is he had to learn it and do it over and over again for it to be innate and 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 muscle memory for him. For Wanda, it just happens and she doesn't it's not even an, yeah, it's instinctual. She she doesn't realize what she can do. Right. And that's I think the scariest part for someone like Doctor Strange. It's like we have no idea 
what she's capable of and neither does she right well and and that's uh really uh reflected in the finale when she starts doing things like casting runes and sucking the magical energy out of Agatha. Like it's, yeah. it's very much a, it's like, Oh, you, I've watched you do it. Yeah. Now I can do it yeah. again. We'll go back to my favorite character in heroes season two, which was the girl that had the muscle automatic memory. muscle memory. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, she watched Ray Mysterio do a six one nine and now can do it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, I loved it. And then the little <laughs> kid just starts showing her right like, martial arts movies and right. You know, see that's a brilliant. And in fact, eventually it's we the will. Matrix. Yes, yes. <laughs> well, it's more. There is a there is a character in Marvel that does it, but it is a villain called Taskmaster, which supposedly will show up in this rumored Black Widow movie. Yeah, uh, I don't know, man. <laughs> <laughs> that's a terrible name. Oh, Taskmaster. Yes. Yeah. It's a terrible name. So it sounds like somebody that works for a company like what was that rabbit? Task Rabbit. Task Rabbit. Yeah. <laughs> Tired two. I, uh, I am a senior. I am a senior worker at Task Rabbit. I am the Taskmaster. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll never be able to use that service without saying that out loud to somebody. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be like, ma'am, please. I just came to <laughs> your furniture. <laughs> I just came to assemble your furniture. Please don't. Put the whip down. No. <laughs> I have a safe word. I have a safe word. Are you or are you not involved with the Black Widow movie? <laughs> <laughs> Tell me. Uh, <laughs> ma'am, this is a Wendy's. <laughs> <laughs> this is why i have so many friends uh (laughs) (laughs) so uh final thoughts just in general on the comic what did we think this is actually one of the few large events like i would say the closest that we've done to this in the show it's probably been dark phoenix (laughs) but even dark phoenix didn't go mcu wide like this did um actually probably closer when we did uh guardians of the galaxy oh yeah yeah, yeah, that's just right. Just for sheer number of characters that were introduced in the comic. But right. this was much better because these were much more accessible characters. They were all over the place. I was I was delighted by the number of characters that showed up in this comic. So, okay, so let me ask. What's the difference between being annoyed by so many characters are on panel and this where you were delighted? Um, because there were literally, like, when we were doing, what was the name of that one? It was Cancerverse. Cancerverse, yeah. I was like, negative verse? No, that's not right. Um, which was still entertaining because I'm never going to not like, you know, a Cthulhu-based mm-hmm. comic book. But um, just because most of them you didn't interact with at all. Like, they were on the screen for, you know, they were on the page for, like, maybe literally a page. Or um, a panel. Or a or they panel. Or man- mentioned. Yeah. And there was, like, a dot they're, yeah, on they're the like, panel. They're, they're, it was a weird conversation bouncing around between six people that is going to be yeah. irrelevant by the time you turn the page. Yeah. As opposed to this, where they're pretty much utilizing everyone that they bring on the page for a specific task, you know, with Emma Frost being the taskmaster. Um, <laughs> <laughs> well, and not that, not point, that far off, actually. To that point, it felt like the inclusion of all of those characters, there was a point to it. Yes. In right. House of M. In Cancerverse, you're like, why are you even talking about yeah, these that, it, why? it seemed just gratuitous. Yeah. No one cares. No Nova. Right. <laughs> uh, yeah. So, Leia, in general, I mean, where do you where do you list this in your in your Marvel heart uh, when it comes to storylines? Wow. Okay. So, um, this is I. I mean, I I have I've been part of the of the MCU since its inception, <laughs> and and have been a, a really um, really devoted fan. And and there are so many movies that I I will point to and be like, this one is my favorite. And 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 you know, but. Um, they're this all one, my favorite. Exactly. Um, this one really spoke to me in a way <clears throat> that um, previous Marvel movies uh, have not been able to do. Um, there were a lot of ways that this resonated with me um, personally, on a personal level, um, as somebody who has experienced, um, you know, grief and loss and tragedy and 
and things like that and and you know things not working out the way that you had hoped or dreamed or planned and um and and how you react to that and how you respond to that um and and whatnot and I really just like the themes in it were were just they just floored me like I was completely gobsmacked I think from from the first episode on because I could kind of see where it was going even just in that very first episode and I was like oh man this is gonna make me cry and <laughs> and it absolutely did um I mean there was there were the only other movie uh the only other Marvel property that I ugly cried at was um Black Panther mm, yeah. and in this particular series I think towards the, the back end of the of the of the series from like episode I want to say uh seven on uh there were just a lot of ugly crying moments <laughs> in fact on on Friday when I watched because my my ritual is as I get up in the morning uh now because I I don't work on Fridays so the very first thing I do is I make myself a cup of coffee and then I put my butt back into bed and I turn on WandaVision right and I'm going to continue this I think for as as long as the series are coming out um like I don't do anything else I don't check social media I don't take a shower I just make my cup of coffee and I watch my stories um and well and you have a week break and then uh Falcon and the Winter Soldier starts and so oh yes you might oh, yeah. you might just want to move your coffee pot into your bedroom. Oh God! I mean, and just, <laughs> I I assure you, no one is more excited than me for Falcon and Winter Soldier. I, a person who back around the time when Civil War came out in 2016, turned directly to my friends in the theater when I saw Sam and Bucky interact, and I was like, "Give them their own show. I yep. want them to have a buddy cop show." They deserve a buddy cop show. This was before Disney Plus existed. This was before any kind of TV shows, you know, were even, you know, a glimmer in some some poor screenwriter's eye. But, um, you know, much like Wanda, I willed that into existence. And I'm very proud of that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, yes, I'm very, very hyped for that. Um, but, yeah, I mean, and, and but do I think that one is going to resonate with me like this one? I don't know. Yeah. yeah. Um, this one was very personal for me. Uh, you know, speaking only for myself, this one, this one was like a personal um, kind of gut punch uh, in the best possible way. Um, you know, the themes that it dealt with were, were so beautiful and, and was handled with such incredible care. Um yeah and 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 grace and um even though it was very sad there was a lot of joy in it too you know and um you know it was just it was just really really well done and and of course you know buddy cop show is not even on the same planet right, yeah, as this exactly um, exactly and I, and I don't know that it would have been done as well i mean elizabeth olsen is a phenomenal actor like mm -hmm. just you know that just a close-up of her face and you know exactly what is going on inside yep. her head mm -hmm. um just so good and and leah i completely agree with you there there were so many um personal for me themes that were touched on that that they they just approached with such care um and i really appreciated it yeah well and uh it's not often that there is a catch line or a catch phrase put into a show or a movie that doesn't come off as hokey, um, but also encapsulates the, the entire theme. I mean, the only one I can think of is with great power comes great responsibility, but that has been so done to death it, at this it point. Has been, it has been played through. Right. <laughs> to the point where it came back around and people are like, no, it's it's just quotable at this point. Well, yes, right. but you'll notice that they they have not used it with any of the modern Spider-Man movies. They occasionally hint at it and somebody will yes. say, with great, yeah, 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 you know. <laughs> right, <laughs> right, yes. But grief is love persevering is yes. such a great, not only line, but summation of the entirety of the show. It's such a great Absolutely. Summer. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And like, oh man, did that hit me like a mm -hmm. bus right. full of bricks. Like I, I distinctly recall, like I had to, I actually paused it so that I could just cry. Um, you know, for anybody that's experienced um, loss or, or anything like that, what a beautiful way to look at it. What a wonderful summation of, of that. Um, you know, not just, you know, not just, you know, for on a personal level, but for the whole series as well, um, for sure. Because that's all, all that is, all, all of WandaVision was love person. Mm -hmm. Right, right. And, and, you know, it's, um, I guess the, the main way that House of M reflects this that we haven't touched on is that Wanda's grief essentially kidnaps people. Mm -hmm. um, you know, in, in, in WandaVision, it's a much more um, hurtful um, impact to people's lives. In House of M, it's, it's literally 
okay, well, I'm going to encapsulate them in this world that I've created, but I'm going to give them everything that they want. Yeah. Um, I mean, not everybody, because like, for some reason, a bunch of the women are subjugated to men, and that's kind of problematic. Yeah, that was um, a little weird. I did notice yeah. that too. And I was like, what's um, what's going on with this? This is weird. <laughs> right. Yeah. And I'm going to chalk that up to a dude wrote it. Yeah. Um, and, and, <laughs> and doesn't really think about those things, especially in like Everybody gets the girlfriend that they want. Okay, what are those girlfriends doing? I don't know, man. Yeah, who, what, who, cares? who did the girls want to <laughs> right. be with? Yeah. You know? Right. But again, <laughs> one of the questions that Jen like chuckled at and asked, because she's like, and at that point in the comic she's like why are cyclops and emma married and i'm like um well they are la like later they're together but yeah yeah that is uh that's because scott that's what scott wanted and that hints at a bunch <laughs> of stuff later on but it's also why i love emma frost because she's having none of it in right. any of this um but she actually calls that out at one point emma goes why are you why are and we? i married? Yeah, i saw that and i was i started laughing out loud when i saw that why yeah, are you like, and i together scott summers has a fetish for women with psychic powers yeah and he goes he goes extreme though he yeah. goes from the mary sue to emma frost <laughs> <laughs> I guess in a pinch, any any uh, telepath will do. <laughs> right, <laughs> Charles. Listen, uh, I just got an itch. Yeah, Charles. <laughs> Charles, you're looking at pretty good. I put a put a stick in your wheelchair, so you can't go anywhere. That's, uh... <laughs> the wheels are solid. He had Kitty help him. <laughs> <laughs> oh, any other thoughts? WandaVision, House of M. Oh man. Um looking just, forward to the rest uh, of what Marvel has to offer. Yeah. Yeah. No, this does really excite me, especially in the world of pandemic. I need yeah. I needed this. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Well, Agreed. Yeah. The, what I'm going to say is I am very glad that WandaVision was nothing like House of M. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't enjoy I really House did. of M? I well, I did, but I, I mean, I read all of it and I want to, I want to read to the end so I can see that Emma Frost, it was Emma Frost all along. <laughs> You're going to be reading for a while. <laughs> Although um, I will say that the, the result of, of House of M was very important in X-Men, obviously in X-Men continuity, uh, at least to what's called the 198, that there are only 198 mutants left on the earth. Um, and, you know, much, I, I, I think it's the closest that Marvel has ever come to the consequences of the snap in the MCU mm -hmm. because you had hundreds of thousands if not millions of mutants and now you have 198 and how does that mm -hmm. affect things because not all of them that keep their powers are necessarily the good guys right um or the useful ones or the useful ones <laughs> yeah Yes. Because, you know, mutants, they're tools. Well, and yeah. And, and and if you're interested in that, 198 is the next step to go. Um, I really enjoyed what this did to the world because it also leads to a lot of them trying, like the mutants trying to undo it, which leads to alliances between characters that you wouldn't expect. So... And anytime my Age of Apocalypse Dark Beast shows up in something, I love it because it's what Hank McCoy would be if he were just evil. Uh, <laughs> Oh, I love Hank McCoy. Yeah, yeah. Well, his his basically him without morals, but with it still with his scientific mind. His, Damn. So, his so dark he's dark beast. Like, so, he's, so he's sinister at that point. Ish. He works with sinister. That actually doesn't surprise me. No, and it should. Um, <laughs> and, and as I remember it, he is the only person to escape the Age of Apocalypse timeline. Uh, oh, anyway. speaking of that and House of M, that conversation between Hank Pym and uh, uh, McCoy. Oh, was yeah, amazing and so patronizing yeah <laughs> yeah uh I, I will put up a panel but it's basically hank being like i understand you're looking down the barrel of your extinction but unlike the dinosaurs you're actually smart enough to realize it like it is yeah it's if harsh. I was, it is it is so harsh but it's <laughs> such a like hank breaking thing and then he ends with come on i'll take you to lunch <laughs> Mm -hmm. like, brutal they're buddy. there brutal. they're there right they're there poor sapien <laughs> yeah so anyway you want to get a sandwich <laughs> yeah, right? are you hungry <laughs> <laughs> which i would have been mad about it if it was anyone but hank pym uh <laughs> I, I have a zero sympathy for hank pym in pretty much any situation so understandable <laughs> yeah uh yeah. All right. I think we've exhausted this uh, this line. So, Leia, thank yes. you for coming. I'll see you tomorrow. Yeah, I'll see you tomorrow, man. <laughs> and uh, 
please tune in to Lay and I's show that uh, we'll be releasing um, opposite weeks of Graphically Novel, Rec Conversations. Um, if Even if you know nothing about comics, uh, we're going to break it down for you. And in fact, our guests um, are also don't know anything about the storyline and have carte blanche to stop us in the middle of our explanations to ask additional questions. Um, we've done Civil War uh, that would have released <laughs> last week. Um, and we had a great time. Uh, it was very long, but it, very long. <laughs> it is a great time. Um, but but these to be shows... fair, Civil War is very long. So <laughs> Right. So uh, next week will be this book, will be House of M. So if our hints at House of M have intrigued you uh, and you don't <laughs> want to actually go and read the comic, uh, we're there for you in a week. So we'll, we'll see you then. Yeah. Rec Conversations, full spoilers. Full on spoilers. Oh, yeah. <laughs> they will yeah. tell you everything. In yeah, intricate yeah. detail. Yes. Yeah. yeah. If you if you are coming to listen to that and then get mad that we have spoiled a plot line when literally the uh, the concept <laughs> you, of the show yes. is that we are telling people about exactly how to you know breaking down plot lines I I can't help you and God can't neither I'm sorry <laughs> if, if you're mad die mad. die salty bitch it's yeah. your own fault. <laughs> You, have no you did one it to, to yourself. But yourself. Exactly. It's true. That's why so, it really hurts. So I'm making the executive decision. This is the um, season premiere of <laughs> Graphically Novel Season Five. Um, <laughs> I did. I did forget to ask my two lovely co-hosts uh, something. We've been doing this for a year and a half, and in the Batman halfway through the the break episode that we did, that was our episode fifty. Year and a half, isn't it? Two and a half years at this point. No, point? it's a year and a half. Really? Seems like longer. I had to look <laughs> it up myself. Pandemic time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, must be. Yeah, yeah. It was. It was a little before it was the Jason's pandemic started. Birthday. It was pretty much where it, it all boiled down to. Hey, this is actually going to happen, right? Yeah. Where I had thrown my oh no, because yeah, no, yeah, that's right. Because that would be that was two years before. That was when I started my new job. So 2019. Yep. Yeah. Um, but I forgot to ask you. Um, did you ever think we would be on episode 51, season five of 50 this? Fifty episodes in, I figured we'd been done after about 20 and just kind of going, okay, well that didn't work. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, I know. Jen's <laughs> going to be the one saying, I knew I was there again. No. Technically, she was. But. I was. Um, no, I- I'm not surprised at all. I understand your passion for this. And um, this is a fantastic way for you to be able to share what you love with people that you like or love, <laughs> both, um, and and share it with a larger audience. So, no, I'm not surprised at all. I, I think this is the... And, and not only has have we reached the 50th episode and beyond you've started a second show yeah and that's the plan and have inspired other people to start shows that's right because luke is starting (laughs) his own yep exactly and we will have other shows we will keep going so last question and then we'll uh we'll kick it off to vandello um what is the biggest series comic uh or or tv that we didn't experience before this that is now kind of a passion of yours like what are you passionate about that we have covered because i will say um for me um i i never would have expected um to have gotten as into batman as i did for that episode (laughs) i mean like i found some stuff that i was like oh yeah i mean even earlier than that though i have all of the comic books that jessica jones has been in um and that was our second episode the show was really really good but I kind of knew about her. I had read some stuff with her, but her as a character, I have every every graphic that that she was involved in because she's just a fantastic character and a very underappreciated character. Um, but that's that's kind of what I think of when I think of this show and my comic book passions have really introduced me to a new character that I never would have thought of. Do either of you have anything like that? Um, off the top of my head, I can't think of anything. Um, it's definitely introduced me to a lot of things that I would have never, you know, checked out on my own. Um, you know, and that's what I really like about the show, that it has introduced me to things. And I mean, you know me, if I start reading something, I can tell fairly quickly if I'm going to get into it. If, if I'm not, or if um, you're just going to file it under, you know, like dark I, Phoenix. Well, it's gonna be, <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I, you know, it's sort of like grad school. Like when I'm in a class that I'm like, okay, this is, I have to do this. I'm going to like power through this reading, get what I need to know from it. I am not going to enjoy it. I am not going to go seek out more information 
unless I have to. Um, there have been episodes that I have done that. And I, off the top of my head, I can't think of, of anything aside from cancer verse. That was painful. But... <laughs> well, I will say that- I had a um, love-hate relationship with cancer verse. Yeah. <laughs> I will say uh, for Jen, um, I have a large stack right next to me of comic books that are not for either show and are just for eventually I'll have a break and I can read for fun again. Um, in that stack is the second uh, collected of both Deadly Class and Old Guard. So those obviously were enough that when I saw them in a comic book store, I was like, oh yeah, these, you know? Um, and I'm sure there are a few others that if I saw them, like Doom Patrol, I would probably keep following because yeah. um, that was a lot of fun. Um, I've actually had I've had several people um, start talking to me about comics is like start asking questions and they're like you know so so what was the, the some of the best stuff you've done what do you you know what do you like to watch like uh, just yesterday at work uh, one of my co-workers came up to me and was like hey bear comic book guru <laughs> and I'm, like, I'm like well I don't know about that but <laughs> if you want episodes say otherwise <laughs> Um, and he was like, you know, I'm, I'm running out of stuff to watch. He's like, the last thing he recommended to me was The Boys. Um, I'm done with it. And I'm just looking for something else. I'm like, he's like, I'm, I'm, I'm out. What do you, what do you got for me? <laughs> um, and I just started shotgunning answers at him. I'm like, I'm like, what are you looking for? Like, what do you want? He's like, I want, uh, you know, outlandish superhero powers, you know, and stuff like that. And I'm like, well, you know, I was like, it's just started rattling things off. I'm like, you, you want to get, want something? really good to watch I'm like go watch Doom Patrol because how do you not love Brendan Fraser um, and and you want wacky ass powers the beard hunter is in Doom Patrol right? yes. <laughs> oh my god that that Seriously, show is gonna that... be my next you know like World of Darkness <laughs> mage character is gonna be the beard, beard hunter, hunter. Um, that <laughs> series was so good I, I just I can't even I, and I we probably it. I probably wouldn't have gotten you to watch it because it was a, a DC property that close to the CW for a lot of years stuff but no i mean it, it was it's just odd enough it's just strange enough that it, it piqued my interest the first episode yeah. so yeah no i don't think that that would have been a hard all and that that conversation actually came up with my buddy from work and he's just like i was like what what have you watched for this you know this type of movie that type of movie he's like i was like did you watch flash he was like i watched like two seasons of flash and i was not impressed and i'm like then you don't want to watch <laughs> i started listening i'm like you don't want to watch green arrow you don't want to watch all the I would arrow. still say if he likes the, the <clears throat> weird wacky stuff Legends of Tomorrow would be up his alley but yeah no it would not but if I'm he didn't a... <laughs> like Flash he wouldn't like that no he really wouldn't <laughs> <laughs> But, you know, I just and like started rattling just general TV stuff off at him. Like, but as far as like stuff that I've, I'm going to go back, like, again, like you, I have, I have homework, you know, I've, I've got a stack of graphic novels. I went out and I've bought. I've doubled my homework. <laughs> <laughs> I went out and bought more graphic novels of my own accord today, preempting you for the fight that I know is coming. Um, and I will post them on the, on the Facebook page so you can see. Yeah, Thanks. I have sad violins for your homework, boys. <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you. You're almost done. You're almost done. We're only 50 episodes in. And then you'll need a project to really dive into. <laughs> Don't worry, I've got projects. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't get, uh, or as, I mean, as far as stuff for, that I'm definitely going to go back to is Doom Patrol, Preacher, like, mm -hmm. you know, I'm, I'm going to follow Snowpiercer now for, even uh, though we haven't done the episode on it, I'm going to follow that for. We're just getting into it now, and the Love TV it. show is so good. It's brilliant. The comic, I got 15 pages in right after I bought it at Barnes & Noble and was out, like, waiting for Jen to come out of whatever clothing store, Old Navy. Um, but I got 15 pages in and I'm like, oh, I am sold on whatever this is. Yeah, like, and he's like, you'll love it. It's French. Well, <laughs> well, and then the movie is, if you were a Captain America or Chris Evans fan at all, he's the main character, so. Oh, yeah, still haven't seen yeah, the movie. I think we turned it on so for good. Like five minutes last night and went, nope, we do not. We do not have energy for this. Yeah, you were like, I need to go to bed now. And I'm like, what, you just turned a movie on. <laughs> if i had a nickel for every time i did that i would do a million uh, right falling asleep on the couch watching whatever and then just waking right. up going oh well i'll have to watch that again later yep. <laughs> well uh this has been graphically novel tune in next week when we will be doing the snyder verse justice league uh, <laughs> where we have three Ooh. different 
guests. No, four. Yeah. Four different guests. Fair. Yep. Fair. Um, <sighs> and also three different suggestions. Here's to our livers, Jen. Oh, <laughs> we're gonna we're Fuck. gonna we're gonna hate Fuck. watch this movie. <laughs> and four different suggested Justice League Justice League stories uh, to go along with it. Oh, and heads up, our our lovely audience. I'm not reading all of those. No, 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 no. no. Thick with three C's. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, no, I'm not reading all of them either. <laughs> How about I'll read one, you read one, <laughs> Josh read all oh, of them. Oh, I thought you were going to offer to read my strategic management textbook. Oh, no, no, that's all you. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, until then, take it away, Vandello. <laughs> But the same old trouble, villains always knocking at the door. Pretty pictures on the page, but nothing ever stays the same. Do, 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 do. I'll show you something you ain't never seen before Right or wrong, oh can't we all just get along My mask is no different than yours Pretty pictures on the screen But nothing's ever as it seems Don't want to see my back.